What's up guys, it's your favorite keeper coach and give me six months of your time, I'll give you the best golf swing of your life. So welcome back to the channel. In this particular video, we have another climb before and after video for you today. And if you were struggling with an overswing, getting the club head height too low, getting the club shaft crossed, having some pretty crazy elbow positions at the top of the swing, this is the perfect before and after video for you. So let's go ahead and jump in. But before we get into the video, I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, and that is Kiwi Golf Japan. If you're too busy or you just can't make it out to our locations for lessons, Kiwi Golf Japan is the membership site for you. With 230 plus videos of golf instruction, we have everything on the site you could possibly want. So go ahead and check out that link down below, and now let's jump into the video. So like I said in the intro, this particular client was really struggling with their top of swing position. But before we get into the top of swing position, I do want to start off with low point, because this was the main issue this player was struggling with. He came into the lesson really struggling with a lot of thin shots and really just couldn't control strike out there on the golf course. Now, typically when it comes to thin shots, there's two types of players that kind of have thin shots. If you're really, really steep in transition and steep as you approach the golf ball, you can hit the ball thin from that position, or you can be really, really far underneath the plane and get the low point really far behind the ball and also struggle with a lot of thin shots as well. The main point is whenever you're having a low point drastically away from the golf ball too much, you're probably gonna struggle with a lot of thin and duff shots, and that's exactly what this player was struggling with. So let's go take a look at the before swing first, then the after swing. Then we're gonna start off with low point. I'm gonna show you exactly where he currently is. Work our way all the way back up to the top of the swing, and you're gonna see a great um, kind of correlation between the top of swing position and why his low point was so far behind the ball. So this is gonna be the before swing right here. And this is gonna be the after swing right here. So as you can see, there's some massive differences at the top of swing position with the elbows, with the club head height, with the club shaft position. But really the big change, the change that I was most happy with was gonna be the low point shift that we had at the bottom of the swing. Now I think that a lot of what we did with the top of swing position was really helping with this low point shift. But let's start out with the low point, show you the before, show the after, kind of get a good idea of what we wanted to change. And then from there, we'll work our way back up to the top of swing. So as we can see with the before swing, the low point was drastically behind the golf ball. Let's say anywhere from two to three inches behind the ball. Now what this was resulting into was an ascending blow as he approached the golf ball. This means that his angle of attack was roughly anywhere from two to three degrees up on the golf ball consistently. And that's a great way to actually hit a lot of thin shots. When you get that low point that far behind with an iron and you're hitting that far up with an iron, you're probably gonna hit a lot of thin shots because the golf ball is not teed up, right? So because it's on the ground, that's not what you want to do with iron shots when you want to hit them consistently. Now, as we take a look at the after swing, we can see the low point is much closer to the golf ball at this point as well. The sweet spot is entering in much more neutral to the golf ball as opposed to before it was swinging much more into out, right? So the swing direction has also changed drastically between the two. Ultimately, before this would lead to an upper blow as he actually ascended into the golf ball, where this one he actually had a slight bit of a down blow, so the low point was actually slightly ahead of the golf ball about a half an inch and this resulted in the compression rate to be a lot higher so the smash factor was a lot more efficient and then ultimately he was hitting the golf ball a lot further because he was compressing the golf ball a lot further. However, the funny thing was we shortened his golf swing, so technically the potential speed was less, but because we got the smash factor rate consistently higher, we actually got the distance consistently more. And that's something that you guys should really start to think about when you're trying to get more distance. Do you really need more speed or do you need a better compression rate, right? A higher smash factor rate. So. Let's go take a look at kind of P5 to P6, because this will be the first section of the golf swing that you can really see why his low point was so far behind and so far uh, swinging into out. And then from there, uh, we'll move our way to the top of swing. So starting at position five, we're gonna find that the club shaft was actually kind of steep at position five, right? Which is something that you wouldn't necessarily think a player who struggles with low point behind the ball, swing direction so far to the right, would necessarily have. However, he did have a very steep club shaft, but from this position, he actually actually would flatten the club shaft drastically as he approached the golf ball. And let me kind of demonstrate that right now. So as we take it down to the next position, let's go draw a line on the club shaft movement here, and then let's go create an angle, and let's go take a look at the degree shift right here. So he's had right around 12 degrees of flattening at this point in the golf swing. Now, is he still steep? Technically, yes, at this position, he's still steep. But the main thing is he's actually flattening to get still into a steep position, which means that 
later and later in the golf swing, he's gonna continue to flatten and flatten and flatten, and that's gonna actually push the club head well behind the hands, get the club head really low to the ground really early, and this was really the root cause of a lot of his issues. So from this position, let me just draw a line on the club shaft so you can kind of see what's going on here. As he continues to flatten the club shaft, look how low the club head is when it's aligned to the hands. Typically, you want to see the club head at the same height of the hands when they are aligned not below the hands, but he's definitely well below the hands. And then as he moves into this P6.5 position, if we go draw an angle on the club shaft, look at the number we have right here. He's right around 11 degrees. Most of the people you're gonna see is anywhere from the 23 degree range to about the 30 degree range, right? So the club head would be much more out towards the golf ball at this point in the golf swing. So this is all telling us that at low point, the direction of swing is gonna be really far out to the right. And as well, the low point is gonna be really low to the ground. So because he was so steep at position five, he had to flatten the club shaft or else he risked having a low point too far ahead of the ball. But because he was flattening so much to try to recover, it was difficult to apply a torque to stop that flattening and he couldn't get the golf ball or sorry, the golf club out towards the ball enough. And this is what got the swing direction into out too much and low point too far behind the ball. So then from there, the question becomes, you know, what was causing this club shaft to get too steep at position five? Now, before we go answer that question, let me show you guys the after swing really quickly. So if we go take a look at the after swing and go from P5 to the next point, notice how the lines are running parallel to each other and there's no intersecting at this point in the golf swing. That means that he's not flattening the club shaft from this position, which is P5, to this position, which is roughly right around P5.5. And then as he continues to move down, yes, there's a little bit of flattening in this next section, but nowhere near as much as he was before. And then as he starts to approach P6, we're gonna find the club head is, yes, still behind the hands, a little bit too much for my liking, but it's much closer than it was before. And then as we kind of get into this P5.5 section, let's go take a look at the club shaft now. Let's go take a look at the angle that we're creating at this point in the golf swing, right around 18 degrees. So is he in the correct ranges? Not exactly, right? We still want him to be more out towards the ball. But even though he didn't get into the perfect point, we were still able to get a low point pretty much a half an inch ahead of the ball and still get much higher compression rates, even though we weren't doing everything perfectly. But because he was in a flatter club shaft position at position five, this made it a whole lot easier to not try to flatten down into P6, but more so almost, if anything, try to steep it a little bit into P6. And that's what really started to get the low point shift. All right, that's it for you guys on YouTube. But before you guys click off the video, let me give you some quick wrap up points. So if you're struggling with thin shots, you gotta identify what type of thin shot are you hitting? Are you coming in too steep into the golf ball and hitting a thin shot because your low point is too far ahead? Or are you like this player who was coming in way too flat into the golf ball, getting that low point way too far behind and then also hitting the thin shot. I would say that most of the golfers we see nowadays are actually too flat, whereas maybe five years ago, most of the golfers that were uh, topping the ball or thinning the ball were actually too steep. So it's really interesting to see how the shallowing phase has affected a lot of you guys out there. This is why I think you guys really need to have specific parameters, and this is why we always try to talk about parameters in our videos. So if you guys are struggling with this and you can't do it by yourself, well, that is where the Kiwi Coach six month program comes in. We just launched our online six month program, so go ahead and check that out if you can't reach our physical locations. If you guys can reach the physical locations, we highly recommend going to our physical locations because typically physical location lessons are always just a little bit better than the online. Other than that, like, comment, subscribe, share, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys in the next video.